What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Rusto Mod Garage. In this episode, we are going to start our 1950 Willy's Wagon project and give you guys kind of a rundown of what we're going to do to this thing to make it a little bit unique in comparison to some of the other builds that we've done in the past. So if you saw the last episode, I kind of give you a rundown of what we're going to do. But if you missed that episode, I'll give you a good walk around of the Jeep so you can get up to speed on what we're going to do to this thing. So this is a 1950 Willys wagon and actually we got this thing quite a while ago. You actually probably saw it in the background of some other episodes that we filmed in the past. But basically we got this thing as a project and wanted to do kind of a low budget build, just get it running and driving. But of course we can't leave anything alone. So we're ending up going over the whole thing and doing a chassis swap. So this is a 1950 Willy and it actually is pretty solid, not too bad as you can see on the inside. Definitely kind of torn apart, but isn't in too bad a shape. Definitely needs an interior refresh and some aesthetic stuff like that. But overall, a really solid foundation for a project car. It definitely does need some work and definitely does need some rust attention, but not too bad and is a good foundation for us to be able to pull the body off of this thing and modify what we need to put the body on without doing a severe amount of body work, but be able to work on this thing and not have to weld a ton so we can make this build a little bit easier on ourselves. So underneath the hood, this thing currently has a 350 V8 in it. Somebody swapped in and they kind of just did a really crude job. They do have an adapter plate to the original four speed transmission in this, but that's pretty much it. The motor's just placed in there. The exhaust, obviously you can see it just dumped out the side. It doesn't run very good, doesn't drive very good. Definitely needs an overhaul. Now we were gonna do a V8 in this, but decided that we wanted to switch up the powertrain and do something a little bit different. But then that kind of snowballed into us why not just swap the entire frame because 50 year old suspension is just out of date and it, we have to do brakes and leaf springs and everything like that why not just swap this whole thing onto an existing chassis and so that led to what we're going to do next so we're really big fans of the show dirt every day on motor trend and a guy on the show fred actually has one of these willies wagons and in an episode he actually swapped the entire chassis from a jeep yj that was rolled over and he put the entire body of the wheelies onto the jeep yj frame and so that really was our inspiration for this we were like man that's a great idea and we hadn't thought of that before we started this project so we began looking for jeep chassis that would be a good fit for our jeep in our area that is affordable now jeeps rot really bad and they have a lot of frame issues so we wanted to be careful which which one we picked so we ended up actually finding a Jeep TJ, so a little bit different than the YJ that is on Fred's Jeep. The TJ actually has coil spring suspension instead of leaf spring suspension. So a little bit different and unique suspension than the typical Jeeps because the coil springs tend to ride a little bit better and there's a lot more aftermarket availability for the coil spring setup. And like I said in the first episode, we want to be able to drive this thing on the road. So we don't want to get beat up with leaf spring suspension that this Jeep has currently on the old frame so we decided to look for a jeep tj with coil spring suspension and we ended up finding one so this is basically how we found it it's a jeep wrangler tj and it had the whole body on it and the motor and transmission still in it and that was great so we could pick off parts that we needed and sell off some parts for some extra money to refund some cost of the jeep project that we bought so that's basically it. We are going to chassis swap a Jeep Wrangler chassis from the modern era under this 1950 Willys wagon and make it ride very nice, but be able to have some aftermarket availability with axles and everything like that. Have disc brakes, have power steering, air conditioning, all the modern amenities. But doing it this way would kind of blatantly copy Fred and we want to be a little bit different. So instead of having a 350 or the stock Wrangler motor, which are both great options, we ended up wanting to do something that I've always wanted to do, and that is changing the engine from a gasoline engine to a diesel. So this is actually my daily driver. This is a 2005 Volkswagen Jetta, and it has a 1.9 liter Volkswagen turbo diesel in it. And this is a great motor. I'm really happy with it. It has over 200,000 miles on it, and I've never had an issue with it. But I wanted to try to change up our Jeep builds and do a T 
TDI swap. And these are actually really common. A lot of guys are swapping these TDIs into everything now since the price of a Cummins 4BT has gotten so expensive. Also, a Cummins 4BT is just very heavy and these weigh a lot less than a 4BT and they fit the G platform really well. Guys actually swap these things all the time, so I wanted to try it. So our TDI is a little bit different than the one in my Jetta. This one's actually fully mechanical and ready to go. It needs one wire for it to run. And it's very similar to kind of a come and swap where it doesn't require a lot of electricity and wires for it to run. So that is the full build breakdown. We're doing a Jeep Wrangler frame underneath this Willys wagon, but powering it with a Volkswagen TDI engine. All right, so now that you know what's going on, let's load this thing up, get to the shop and start tearing this thing apart. finally got this thing into the shop so the first thing that we're going to have to do is measure this jeep wheelbase to see the difference between this jeep and the jeep wrangler that we're going to swap onto the frame so we go about this by just measuring the center hub on the front and the back of the jeep measuring it a few times and then we actually have a plumb bob to be able to see the exact center line that we need to measure to on this old jeep frame now, a lot of times back in the day, they didn't exactly center the wheel into the wheel well, depending on the vehicle. Like in our C10 episode, we actually centered up the rear wheel because it wasn't exactly centered into the wheel well to begin with. So we mark everything to see what is the exact center in the wheel well. So that way, when we swap the frame, you wouldn't even know it's frame swap. Okay, we did all of our measurements on the wheelies and uh, we're gonna maintain the wheelbase at 104.5, which is the stock. As you can see, this, this front wheel looks to be fairly well centered in the wheel well. It doesn't hurt to cheat that forward a little bit, but it looks like the wheelbase probably has grown by about an inch due to the leaf spring sag and the shackles moving outwards towards the end of the vehicle. So once this thing gets on the new chassis here, that that differential goes out of play and actually load gets put on the uh, the, the TJ chassis, it'll it'll approximate the same same kind of motion due to the the position of the uh, trailing arm so now that we have the body measured to where the wheel has to be centered into the wheel well we can begin disassembling the jeep and pulling all the frame members off so that way we can get this body off of it so we can see how much of a difference it's going to be onto our new jeep chassis So once we got all the body mounts off and everything like that, pretty simple and straightforward, easy body swap. But one thing was holding us up. On Jeeps this old, the steering column and the brakes are actually mounted to the frame. And so we had to figure out a way to get our steering wheel off to be able to get the body off because the steering wheel has to go through the floor. So this Willys steering wheel, it's ancient of course, uh, but these little threaded screws here where uh, the horn button mount came out. Those are just threaded into the phenolic. And you'll notice they don't have uh, any holes in there, threaded holes like you typically see in order to get that out. So we're gonna use a bearing puller behind it and get a regular puller on it. And let's see if that works. So here's a setup, just a regular two arm puller with the bearing puller behind it. So we're gonna start cranking on it. Go ahead and start cranking. There it came. Yep. So it did it, it, it works. There we go. Now that our steering wheel is off, we can actually raise the body up so the steering column shaft can just go through the bottom of the floor. We actually have to roll the frame forward a little bit while we're lifting it up. So we're going back and forth, rolling the frame forward, lifting the body up simultaneously so it can clear that steering column hole in the floor. So we ended up getting it off pretty easy after that. And then we can roll the chassis out from under it. All right, 
finally got this chassis rolled out from under the Jeep and we are done with this chassis. So you can kind of see a better look at it now that it's out from under the frame. It's just a leaf spring suspension and somebody had swapped the 350 in it. And other than that, it's pretty stock. The bumper brackets and everything we're gonna have to get off and everything like that to be able to attach to our new Wrangler frame. So in the next episode, you'll see us take this entire Jeep Wrangler apart and figure out how we're going to go about mounting this 50 wheelies body onto this modern chassis. So thanks so much for watching. Like sure you like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next episode.